Okay, welcome to um, my talk. My name is Sinti Lee, and I'm a geology professor over at Rice University, uh, and also on the board of the Gulf Coast Bird Observatory. And um, I've been uh, fascinated with a lot of um, challenging groups of birds in terms of field identification. And one of the passions that I have is in the identification of flycatchers. And what I'm gonna to present to you today is identification of kingbirds. And uh, I've never shown this before. This will be part of a book that we're uh, working on that'll come out um, in a year. Um, in Texas, we of course have uh, kingbirds from uh, four types of kingbirds, the Western castings, couches, and tropical. And the ranges are here. The uh, Western is more out West, but uh, does range to the upper Texas coast in the spring and summer. Cassins is of course way out uh, West and we don't get them out on the upper Texas coast. Uh, and then couches and tropical, we find them in South Texas. And of course the challenge is that kingbirds kind of all look the same. They are grayish birds with uh, yellowish bellies. And here you can see all of them lined up and they look pretty much the same. And so how do you identify these without having to take a photograph or getting incredibly close to the bird and studying every single detail? And that's sort of what I wanna get across today in this little presentation. Um, so the most important thing is to first separate uh, Western and Cassins from the tropical couches complex. We're gonna, for, for starters, uh, treat tropical and couches as the same uh, group. And we'll come back to that because that's where I think a lot of the forefront uh, research is going on. But to separate Western and Cassins from the tropical couches group, uh, these are the primary things you should focus on. First is, the primary extension, which is how long the primaries stick out beyond the, the longest tertials. The other one is the chest color. Is it yellow or is it gray? And then throat color, that matters too. And then tail color, is it black or is it brown? Um, but the most important really are primary extension and chest color. And I'll show you how that works here. So if you look at the Western Kingbird, you can see here, uh, it's not seen too well, but here's the tertial stack and the secondary stack. And then here are the primary uh, extension. It's incredibly long, almost as long as the tertial stack. You also have a gray chest, a light gray chest. And then you have a very black tail, black compared to the browner wings, see black here. And then in the case of the Western Kingbird, um, if you can see it, there's some uh, bright white outer tail feathers. Now you can't, in warm birds uh, or birds at a distance, you may not be able to see this white outer tail feathers, but you'll see the gray chest, you'll see the very long primary extension and see the black contrasting uh, tail. And we can look at Cassin's kingbird, um, very similar, look how long those primary extensions are, black tail, gray chest, or dark gray chest actually. And, uh, and then if we go out to the couch, couches, tropical kingbird, the thing to focus on is look at the short primary extension or shorter than the Western Acassins, same thing here, uh, but the chest is yellow, maybe a dingy yellow, but it's not gray. And this is very characteristic of the couches tropical. And then the brown tail, though that can sometimes be hard to see. So to separate um, Couches Tropical from the Western Castings group, look for the yellower chest and the short primary extension. Western and Castings have very long primary extensions. Look how long this is. When you go to the Western here, it's also very long. And then if you can, and they have gray chests. And then if you wanna further narrow it down to between say Western and uh, Cassins, then you look for the white outer tail feathers in Western. 
And if you go into uh, Cassin's, the gray on the chest is actually much darker and the chin or the throat is actually white. So typically in Cassin's, there's a contrast in white um, throat, a lot more contrasty than in Western. In general, when you get good looks of Western and Cassin's, uh, there is not usually an issue for identification. So I'm not gonna to dwell too much on that here. Just wanna make sure that when you see a kingbird out in any part of Texas, you can quickly decide, are we looking at Cassin's Western type with long primary extensions, or are we looking at a Coucher's tropical type with short primary extensions? So here, uh, I've got them all lined up just for comparison, and you can see light, the light gray chest, dark gray chest for the castings, and the yellow chest for the tropical couches. Uh, shorter primary extension, long primary extension for both Western and castings. So now I'm going to switch over to tropical versus couches, Kingbird. Uh, this is something uh, a complex that I think a lot of people are very interested in, particularly here in South Texas and the Upper Texas Coast. Um, these two birds uh, have long and continue to be thought of as um, unidentifiable without voice. Uh, you hear a lot of people saying that, and, and, and uh, in part it's true. They are incredibly similar, and it wasn't until well, a few decades ago, that these two, the tropical and couches, were actually recognized as two different species. They were originally um, thought of as just subspecies. And I will come back to this, um, but what we are going to focus on are a number of structural cues as well as um, plumage differences. Again, we're going to be looking at the chest, we're gonna be looking at the wing structure, we're gonna look at the wing um, panel contrast here, and also a little bit on the, the structure of the tail and the head, okay? And in general, uh, tropical is, is a sort of slimmer, longer looking bird than couches. It has a longer bill, uh, there is overlap of course, a slightly straighter colman, whereas you look at uh, couches, the colman tends to be uh, a little curved and the bill tends to be on the more conical side. Uh, the crown is a little bit more angular or lower profile on the tropical and the couches um, has a much more rounded crown. Both of these have greenish backs, which helps to separate them from Western and Cassins sometimes, but not always. Um, they both have yellow chests, but the tropicals has a dingy wash over it, whereas the couches tends to be a brighter yellow. In the extreme end members have very bright yellows and contrast with the whitish um, throat. Um, they have short primary extensions, and uh, there are some subtle differences in the primary extension uh, proportions between the two species. Uh, they both have slightly forked tails, with tropical being a little bit, uh, tending to a little bit more forked uh, than couches. Um, and a very important feature turns out to be what I call the wing panel contrast, black here primaries and uh, pale edged primaries in the tropical. We're gonna go through this uh, one by one. Uh, but before we do this, just a few notes for completeness on uh, the distribution of couches kingbirds. Couches, is really a South Texas bird and just barely reaches the upper Texas coast, Texas coast and maybe into a little bit into Louisiana. And it extends out along the Atlantic or the Gulf of Mexico uh, coastal plain into Yucatan and, and Belize. And it's primarily a year round resident with local movements. Um, it does wander uh, uh, to the north, uh, mostly in the fall. Um, and uh, records have gone up to North Texas and even up into New England and Southern Canada, Southeastern Canada. And remarkably, there are a couple of records for even California, uh, fall records with some staying uh, into the winter. They, their vagrancy, of course, uh, is a lot 
uh, lower rate than tropical. Tropical really vagrates uh, uh, quite a bit. And um, here you'll see tropical actually occurs more in the southernmost part of Texas and then wanders in the summer up to uh, the central Texas and the coastal plain and the upper Texas coast. But mostly it's a, a resident that goes down through Central America and then continues down into South America. And it is migratory. There are some that have uh, somewhat longer distant migratory behaviors than say couches at Kingbird. Um, there are a number of subspecies recognized, TM occidentalis, TM satrapa, and then uh, Despotes down here, and then Melanconicus, uh, which is in South America and is the one that in, would migrate down to Southern Argentina during the austral summer. And it's possible that uh, some of the vagrating birds are associated with these austral migrants. So here you can see that in fall, particularly with some staying into the winter, they vagrate, they're primarily coastal, but they can get all the way up to like Newfoundland and up through the Pacific coast, in fact, all the way up to past British Columbia. Spring vagrants um, uh, are, are much rarer, but they do occur up into the Great Lakes region. They tend to be quite rare in the spring in the West Coast. Um, okay. This is for completeness for you to also see when they uh, are most likely to arrive in terms of the vagrant. Uh, these are sort of the bar charts for your, for your reference. Now, it is widely agreed that truly separating these two species to be truly confident, the best way of course is by um, call. And uh, the couches has a, a call that goes breer. And then the tropical is like a twittering call, much like a, a vermilion flycatcher. And uh, it doesn't seem to want to, let's see, just a second here. Here we go. So that's the breer call. And then this one, we do this. This is the uh, tropical twittering call. And very different. And so if you hear that, uh, you for sure uh, can make your ID. Now the question is, what happens when you don't hear it? Or if you are uh, looking at old photos, how do you uh, separate the, the two? And um, this is just another uh, uh, profile of the tropical on the couches, again, showing the very bright yellow chest of couches, the dingy chest of uh, tropical, a slightly more forked tail of the tropical uh, here, and also um, the weak wing panel contrast here where the primaries have pale edges and the primaries here are black um, in the uh, couches king, but black primaries, dark primaries here with uh, pale edges, okay? So just to show a few things, I have a few skin photos, um, couches on the left, tropical uh, on the right. Don't worry about the difference in sizes here. The, uh, that's due to um, the preparation uh, style. But a few things to note is the tropical has a narrower, longer bill. Um, the uh, yellow on the couches is uh, much brighter. Um, the, and shows a little bit more contrast here. The chest on the tropical tends to be a little bit din dingier, like there's an olive wash across it. So here, to reiterate this sort of olive wash across the chest of the tropical and a more brighter yellow uh, ch chest right here, longer bill of the tropical, uh, more conical shaped bill for the um, couches. Now we're gonna look at the wings. So in the wings, what you wanna look at are a couple of things. The first um, 
to focus on is what I call the primary and secondary stack um, contrast. So the wing panel contrast, this is, we call one wing panel, which are made up by the secondaries and, and the tertials of the secondaries and the primary uh, panel. And it's all about whether the feathers uh, have pale edges to them. And in the couches kingbird, the secondaries have pale edges, but the primaries generally do not have pale edges. And so the primaries look very black. So if you stood at a distance, you would say, well, this is a strong wing panel contrast. In contrast, if you go to tropical, the uh, um, secondaries have pale edges and the primaries have pale edges. And that makes the wing panel contrast pretty low. Uh, so pay attention to the, whether the edgings of the primaries are pale. Uh, if, if they are, it's likely tropical. If they aren't, it's likely couches. Now a subtle difference, a very, very subtle difference is the primary extension relative to the tertial length uh, measured from the greater covers to the tip of the greatest, uh, the longest tertials. And then the primaries are measured from the tertial tip to the primary tip. And uh, couches um, here uh, tends to have a slightly longer primary extension than the tropical kingbird. There's a lot of overlap, but there's a subtle difference. And I would never use this alone to make an ID, but you, it can help in conjunction with other field marks. The wing panel contrast is, is a pretty strong field mark. So here's some skin photos, uh, just to show you. Tropical on the top, couches on the bottom. And here, these are both worn uh, birds taken in the summer. And, uh, but you can see the pale edges to the primaries of the tropical and the darker primaries of the couches due to the limited pale edging of the, the primaries. And, and look at the strong pale edging of the secondaries and tertials compared to uh, the, the lack of them in the couches pri uh, primaries. Again, you can see the couches bright yellow chest and then the tropicals uh, more dingy uh, chest uh, right there. And um, you can look at the primary extension and you can see this primary extension is shorter than that of the couches kingbird. And this, just to uh, be complete, this is the primary extension uh, relative to the tertial uh, length uh, ratio. And the, blue, the green are couches kingbirds and everything else are uh, tropical kingbirds from different areas. So they're different subspecies, there's Texas, Argentina, Arizona. And uh, although there's an overlap, uh, you can see that uh, couches, tends to have a slightly longer primary extension. Again, I would never use this alone, but it is in conjunction with other features can certainly give you a hint and, uh, or supporting field mark um, when you're trying to make an identification. This uh, figure here, couches on top, tropical below, is just showing you the bills in a little more detail. Uh, both have long bills, but the tropical tends to be proportionally narrower and uh, with a, giving you the impression of a longer bill, maybe with a hint of a more hooked bill. And then couches uh, tends to be a, just ever so slightly more uh, conical uh, in shape. And with practice, uh, those features are discernible. The tail is also important. Um, tropical uh, it tends to have a more deeply forked tail with a more pointed uh, tips here, whereas couches uh, tends to be more rounded and only a slight indentation of the tail. Now, this indentation or forked nature of the tail is uh, unique to these two. Western and Cassins uh, generally do not show any forked uh, tails unless they're molting. Um, so if you see forked tail, you're, you're coming into the couch's tropical camp and um, if it's deeply forked, probably tropical, uh, only shallowly forked, probably couches. Again, there's overlap, but you uh, use this 
as a supporting field bark, again, in combination with the, all the other uh, features. So what I'm gonna do now is just go through a few photos and to illustrate some of the points that I tried to make. And um, this is a tropical uh, kingbird. Look at the long bill. It's very yellow down below, but has a dingy uh, chest right here and the forked tail here. Um, that long bill there and somewhat angular head as well. Uh, and the dingy chest here and the slightly forked tail together would uh, really give you the idea that this is tropical, not, not catches. Here's one, I purposely took a photo of this one from below just to show you that that narrower, slightly longer bill can also be seen from below or above, although you rarely see birds from above. And so if you get practice, that bill shape can, can uh, help you. The, the chest is a bit over um, exposed here. Uh, so it's hard to tell if it's yellow or dingy, but, but importantly, what you can see here is that it grades gradually into the whitish throat and it doesn't contrast with it strongly. And that's more characteristic of uh, tropical. Now the tail here is only slightly forked. And uh, uh, just showing you here that in this case, this might look a little bit more like a um, couch's a tail. So if this is all I saw of the bird, I would want to study it more to, to identify it. But I have enough here to give me a hint that you're we're probably looking at a uh, tropical kingbird. Here's one uh, photograph of my friend Chris Bick. And again, from below the, the, the bill, uh, you can see is a little straighter, the Coleman, angular head, dingy chest that doesn't contrast strongly with the uh, whitish throat, uh, slightly forked tail. But more importantly, if you look carefully here, the wing panel contrast, the primary stack, which is right here, is, um, has these pale feather edges, just like the secondary stack, pale feather edges. And so there's little contrast between the primary and secondary um, stack. And that I found, we found is, is pretty robust. It's, uh, you know, 80% of the time, if that's all you see, that's enough to make the, the ID. Now, this one photograph by Letha Slagle um, is also tropical. Look at that long bill and look at the uh, shallow uh, forehead and crown, dingy chest, uh, contrasting only a little poor contrast with the whitish uh, or grayish throat. Um, here, though, it's hard to see the primary uh, stack, but you can see some, a few pale uh, edges there. Here's another tropical, in this case, with a very deeply forked tail that couches rarely shows. And you can see the wing panel contrast uh, field mark where the, the pale edges to the um, sec uh, primaries uh, make the contrast with the secondary stacks here very low. Um, this bill, interesting enough, is somewhat intermediate. And this, if I only saw this bill, I actually would lean towards couches here, uh, just to show you how you know any one of these filmers can be slightly variable, but uh, it's the whole uh, package that really matters for us here. So now we're going to go to um, couches, kingbird, and here we've got different features. This this is the rounder or a, a bill, the more conical bill, more peaked or crowned, uh, rounded crown forehead. And now we're talking bright yellow and, and the chest is yellow as well. And the tail is only slightly indented and might even look more like a Western or a Cassin's kingbird uh, tail, okay? And here though, uh, we can also see the wing panel field mark, while the edges of the primaries do show a little pale edge, they're not as pale as the secondary stack. So now you see a contrast between the secondary stack and the primary stack, and that's um, a feature of uh, the Couch's Kingbird. 
uh, somewhat long primary extension here. Of course, it's much shorter than Western and Cassin's, but in the tropical couches complex, this is a long primary extension. And, and what that long primary extension does is actually it makes the tail look a little shorter. And if you recall, when I said tropical tends to be a slimmer, longer bird, in part is because um, that slimmer, longer appearance in tropical is accentuated by the short primary extension. In couches, the extension is long, which makes the tail um, look a little shorter. Proportion, at least gives you that impression. This one taken from below is to illustrate the shape of the bill for couches. So um, often these, these guys are sitting up high and you can't really see uh, all your features, but this one is showing you that the bill of couches is more broad based than the more narrow bill of tropical. This one was photographed here in Houston. And uh, the tail, only slightly indented, somewhat proportionally shorter, bright yellow all the way up to the chest, contrasting with the pale chin. And the other feature to look at is the wing panel again. If you look at the primaries, they're very black compared to the secondary stack right here. So it's a strong contrast. And you just don't see this too often in, in tropicals. This is also a uh, couches, bright yellow everywhere. Um, uh, kind of a fatter looking bird, shorter tail, uh, only a slight indentation, rounded uh, corners to the couches kingbird, broad based um, bill. And even, well, uh, you can kind of see a, uh, a rounded crown here. So uh, with that, I, um, I conclude end here with uh, this summary slide of how to identify tropical versus couches kingbirds. It takes some practice. Again, voice is the most important uh, feature, but uh, there are structural and plumage features that are reasonably reliable so that if you were to see something out in the field, um, you might uh, be given the hint that, ah, you got a tropical or you got a couches. And for me, the most important things in identifying tropical and couches are the following. The color of the chest, okay, bright yellow and couches. The nature of the wing panel contrast, weak and tropical, very strong in couches, see the black wings here. And um, the shape of the bill, long and tropical, shorter uh, and more conical in couches. Shape of the head, I'm kind of going in decreasing order of, of reliability, uh, more angular, and lower profile crown, more peaked or rounded crown. And then uh, primary extension, the forked tail, and the less forked tail here in the couches. With that, uh, thank you very much.